I'll just take the word gift because you know from Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 8 that a man of God is a gift from God. Just take the word gift very quickly. The word gift. Uh, I'll read this verse for you for those who are uh, maybe not just as familiar with these verses. Ephesians chapter 4. This is speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ. When he has spent, wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men or gave gifts in men. Now that he ascended, what is it but first he descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And you know, there's no doubt about it, a man of God is a gift from God. Pastors are a gift from God. And you know, I remember looking at this years ago, and uh, it speaks about five offices there in that passage. And the way the Lord was ministering it to me was, it's like your hand, just like you've got five, four fingers and a thumb. It's just like God's hand coming down in personal, personal way and ministering to you and giving you everything you need. That's the way the Holy Spirit showed it to me, that, he, that God had provided a means to, to minister to us through these gifts, that we would have everything that we needed to live the Christian life, be victorious in our Christian lives. And that's what a pastor is. A pastor is a true pastor, is a man sent from God. You know, over in the First Kings chapter 19 and verse 16, it says that Elijah, Elisha was chosen of God to be Elijah's successor. You know, there's a lot of men, a lot of people in the pulpit, men in the pulpits today, but they weren't chosen of God. They, they ended up in the pulpits for different reasons, but they weren't, weren't all chosen of God. Some of them were, but not all of them. But we pray tonight that God will give us a man chosen by God, a man, that's, a man for a particular ministry in our church. And, you know, Elijah uh, would pass on his ministry to Elisha, and you'll get it over in First Kings chapter 19 and verse 16. And this is after Elisha experience in Mount Carmel and the Lord tells him uh, and in verse 15 of First Kings 19 and the Lord said unto him, that's Elijah go return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus and when thou comest anoint Hazael to be king over Syria and Jehu the son of, son of Nimshi shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel and Elisha the son of Shaphat of Abel Mehola, thou shalt anoint to be prophet in thy room. So Elijah was a man of God sent from God. God already knew him. God already, you know, we actually we're praying that God's already got a man in view that God can send with a ministry sent from God. It's, it says that um, over in the next few verses of First Kings nineteen. This is after Elijah is saying to the Lord, um, I'm the only one who's standing for your words, who's standing for your glory. And the Lord says, I have yet 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. And you'll know what it goes on to say. So he departed and found Elijah, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he with the twelfth. And Elijah passed by and cast his mantle upon him. And that's what we are praying for tonight, that God will cast a, a, a spirit upon someone that God has chosen to fulfill the role of a pastor. You know, that's not impossible tonight. Don't, you know, when we look at this passage over in Second Kings chapter 6, really what, what we're seeing here is it's a battle of the flesh versus the spirit. And that's always the case. Even you come to prayer meetings like this tonight, We've got to realise that we're in a battle. Well, prayer's always a battle. And we've got to realise who's going to get the ascendancy tonight. Are we going to sit in unbelief and say, well, we've been praying for it for 16, 17 years nearly for a pastor. And are we, are we all of a sudden going to pray tonight? And God, yes, 
you to believe that God can send us a pastor. God can send us a pastor tonight. God can send us a pastor this week. That's not impossible to God. God created the world by the word of his power. Surely he can send a pastor to Zion Baptist Church. He can raise up a man of God. And in this passage, I'll just look, it's got to be of God. You know that this man has to be of God. It's got to be of God's hand. Uh, it's got to be, it can't be anything to do with our desires or what we want. That's why, you know, maybe people over the years have said, well, have you still not got a pastor in Zion? You know, people meeting you saying, well, has your pastor arrived yet? Well, what's happened to all your prayers? What's happened to your prayers? You know, brothers and sisters, we've got to trust God. That when God sends a man of God, it's at the right time. And he's the right man. And we know that. We've heard this so often. We've heard it so many times. It has to be God's man. It has to be God's man anointed with a, and sent with a ministry from God. The next point, I'm going to be very brief, very, very quick in these points. First of all, it's got to be of God. That's the first point of the word gift. The next, the next point is I and gift. And uh, if you look over here at verse 6 of chapter 6, the man of God said, we have, this, is, this is a situation where the sons of the prophets are saying to Elijah, the place is too small for us. We want to go and build a different a dwelling place, a different, a bigger place. And Elijah Elisha says, right, on you go, go ahead. And down to verse 5, and it says, as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where did it fall? And he showed him the place, and he cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. There you go. That's the word of God, brothers and sisters. When we believe it, and when we trust that there's power in the name of Jesus. That's what happens. The word of God becomes alive. Remember the pastor preaching on this years and years ago? I think I heard him preaching on this once. And what he said was, you'll see that the axe head was borrowed. And you know, you've got a lot of ministers in the pulpit, their ministries are borrowed. They've maybe got it off the internet, I don't know. I don't know where they've got it from. But they've never got it firsthand from the Lord. Because see, when something comes firsthand from the Lord, guess what? It comes in power. It comes with, with the power of the, God's spirit behind it. It comes in supernatural power. And that's what happens when you, get, when you get a man of God. Guess what? See when he prays. See when he, see when he says, on oh, you go, I'll cast a stick in, and he believes that the iron's going to float. Guess what? Because the iron represents God's word. I mentioned this to you before numerous times. When Jesus is spoken of Jesus, that he will rule the nations with a rod of iron. You see, I know in this Bible, right, it tells us about the love of God, right? But the whole principle of iron is it's unchanging. God's love won't change, but God's judgment isn't going to change either. His righteous judgment doesn't change either. So the whole idea of the word of God is summed up in this idea of this iron head, this iron axe head, which doesn't change. And it, it takes a man of God to come who believes in God's word that makes it come alive. And, you know, I, I won't go into the details about the stick, you know, that you know that represents Christ. He was, he's the man, he's the branch. He's the one who's been, who's been just like Aaron, Aaron's rod budded in the, in the tabernacle. Remember when the Korah and his company came up against the people of God? It was Aaron's rod that budded. Well, guess what? Jesus is that rod. He's the branch. He's the man whose name is the branch. He's the one who will make it all happen. And we've got to believe God tonight. That when, we, when we pray, you know something? James says, don't come to God and ask anything with a double mind. Don't come thinking, well, I hope or maybe it will happen. As James says, because you'll not receive anything. James says, come in faith believing that what you pray for, you shall receive. Jesus said that as well. Believe, believe that what you pray for, and you know, in this passage tonight, you'll see that Elijah's, Elijah's a man of God, and he believes God. That's what gives him, 
this just what gives him authority here in this situation. And that's what we're praying for. And you know what? God wants a people who believe God's word. Not just one man. God wants a people. God's looking for a people tonight who believe. Because you know something? There's no point in sending a man of God who believes if he doesn't have a congregation that believe. I think you'll agree with that. God wants a congregation that will complement a man of God's ministry. And that's why we're praying tonight. Yeah, Paul says over in 2 Corinthians, talking about the word of God, Paul says, this is a ministry. You know, when this man comes, he'll have a ministry from God. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 3, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. This man of God's sufficiency will be of God. So don't worry. Don't worry. Will he, will he know this? Will he know that? Will he know the next thing? <laughs> don't you worry. His sufficiency will be of God. That's all we need to know. God will equip him and give him everything he needs to fulfill that role that God has chosen him for. Who also hath this is God's, this is Paul speaking, who also have made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. See, the Spirit gave life, caused that axe head to rise up. And you know something, who is the only one who can walk on water? The Lord Jesus Christ. That iron head rose up and came to the surface. And you know something? See when, the, see when you get a man of God who believes God's word, when we pray and believe God, things happen. Things are different. And he needs a people who will believe also and will trust God for supernatural things. You know, we look at we think of our nation, you know, this nation needs this nation needs to hear God's voice. And sad to say, there's not a lot of voices in this nation today who God can use to speak to this nation about our situation, where we are before God. And very quickly, I said to you, you'll need to be a man of faith. Look at look what it says here. I can't go into the details of this passage because there's a lot, there's quite a lot in it. But look over at verse 15 for the next point. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early, I'll, just, just to give you the background here, the Syrians are plotting to, to capture the king of Israel. And no matter what they do, Elisha seems to outwit them. Seems to stop the Syrians from capturing the king of Israel. And the Syrians are getting frustrated with us. So they'll ah, right, let's get the prophet. Let's get the man of God. And you know something? A man of God will always be under attack by this world. Will always come. And the opposition of this world will always come against them. That's why when, we, if, when God raises up a man of God, we need to be, we need to be there for him. We need to have people who are there for him, who can pray for him, and we'll, in, and we'll enter into the battle with him and help him in the battles because there will be opposition. That's, that's, that comes without saying. And it goes on to say in verse 15, And when the servant of the, the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, master, how shall we do? You know, many a time, I'm sure, when we had a pastor, we could come to the house of God. And you know what? God would always have a word for us. He would have a word for every situation. He would have a word that we needed, that God knew had, had prepared, that God knew we needed to help us in our, in our Christian life. How will we fare? How will we fare in this situation? How will we fare? And you know something? See, tonight, maybe that's what you say. Here's all this. This difficulty we've been praying tonight for a pastor. We're saying, how are we going to fare? I wonder tonight if God will hear our prayers and God will send us a man of God. You know, it says here, and he answered and said, here's, here's here, the next point is F for faith. You'll be a man of faith. And Elisha, and he answered and said, fear not. They that be with us are more than they that be with them. A true man of God will not worry about what the world is doing, will not get caught up with what the world is and the fear and everything that's going on in the world. He is caught up with heavenly things. He's caught up with the purposes of God. And that's what we pray for. And you know something? We should be the same. 
we shouldn't be worrying about what the world's doing. You know, a lot of people are worrying about this world today, worrying about this virus, worrying about money, worrying about the economy, worrying about this, worrying about that. What does the Bible say? Cast all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. We've not, as John said on Sunday, we've to set our affections and things above and not on the earth because otherwise they pull you down and a man of God will come with a ministry that will continue to tell you to set your affections and things above. He'll keep saying, look up, look up, brother, look up, sister, look up. Because, you know, when, you, when we look up and our spirits are one with Christ and we're, we're enjoying the presence of the Lord in our life, we're, say, we're start to say, why am I worrying about this? Why am I worrying about that? The Lord's with me. The Lord's with us. There's more that be with us than it's been this that's got the with the world. And that's true. That's the way we should be. And 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 this man will be a man of faith, you know. Over in over in the first uh, Samuel chapter 17, you know It's a beautiful passage. I know you're all very well familiar with it. You know, when when Saul and the the army of Israel are fighting the Philistines, guess what? They're all in a situation of panic and fear. They're all worrying. You know, it says that they were fighting the Philistines, but you know what they didn't want to do? Nobody was prepared to take on the giant, Goliath. You know why? Because you know what it meant. And in some battles in ancient times, what they did was they had their best, they had their best uh, soldier fight on their behalf. And that's what happened. That's how when it starts off in 1 Samuel 17, uh, Goliath goes out and says, um, he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel. This is verse 8 of First Samuel chapter 17. Why are you come out to set your battle in array? I'm not I a Philistine and you servants to Saul. Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. And you know, you know why God raises up pastors? So there'll be examples to us and encourage us because that's what a pastor is. He's an example. He shows us. He shows us by example as to how God wants us to live our life. Not in fear, not in worry about situations, but to believe God and to trust God. And here Saul was the king of Israel, but he wasn't a good example because he was fearing as much as, the, as his army was fearing. But David comes on the scene and you know what he says? He doesn't say fear not, but he says, don't let any man's heart fail because of this giant, because I'm going to take him on. <laughs> I love that faith, brothers and sisters. I just love that faith. I don't know about you, but see, when I read that, I'm like, ah, hallelujah, that's, that's amazing. I love that. This, is, this, 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 man's, this man's a big giant. But you, know, but you know, brothers and sisters, you're going to be taking on a giant tonight. Do you know that? <laughs> You're going to personally be taking on a giant tonight if you're going to pray in this prayer meeting tonight. And you know what that giant will be? The giant of your flesh. Because your flesh is going to say, oh, it's not going to happen. I'm, I can't pray. Your flesh is going to say, I'll never overcome. I'll never pray for it. I'll never believe. I'm not, I can't believe for this. But you know what? If you're a child of God, there's, there's a David inside you. The Christ in you, the hope of glory, wants to rise up. And he wants to come forth and say, don't worry about this situation. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe God's word. And, and you know what? <laughs> this is real, by the way. You've got to take on your own personal giant. That's what these prayer meetings are all about. We've got to overcome our, our, our greatest opposition, first of all, before we can enter into the real battle. Because the flesh tries to stop us. And that's what a man of God does. He shows you by example so that he then encourages you to, to then take on that example. I know Christ is the supreme example. There's nobody can match him. But you know something? You've got the Christ in you, the hope of glory. We all have if, if we're children of God. So he'll be, a, he'll be a man of, this man will be a man of faith. And you know what? God wants not just one man of faith. God wants men and women of faith. who will believe God's word and trust God. Tell me, how precious do you think how precious, what's your thoughts of a, of a man of God for Zion tonight? What are your thoughts? I know this. God's got beautiful thoughts for us. And you know something? I believe God's got a pastor for us. And I believe God's going to send us a pastor.
God's going to raise up a pastor for Zion Baptist Church because you know, I've I have never at any time ever ever felt that that's it. Zion's finished. Never at any time have I ever felt that before God. I've never felt that ever, ever had a witness. Oh, that's it. It's finished. The work's finished here. As other people have left, I've always felt God has a purpose here. God has a plan. And if that's true, then I believe God is going to raise up a pastor. It's as simple as that. I don't need I don't need to go into a big dialogue and give you this and that and the next thing. No, I believe God. It's as simple as that. And very lastly, you know what a pastor will do? He will he will deliver you from the last point. He will help to deliver you from I've written down here two wells. You'll be saying, what do you mean by that? <laughs> you know, that's that's what happened to Joseph's brethren when they walked away. Instead of instead of being obedient to the word of God, Joseph's brethren walked away. And you know where they ended up? They ended up in a place called Dothan. And Dothan is in this passage that we're reading tonight. Because a, man, a true man of God will help to stop you from being overcome by this world. Through his ministry, he will help to build you up and encourage you to walk the Christian life and to live the Christian life and to conform to the image of Christ so that you don't get carried away by this world, so that the things of this world don't overcome you and you don't become dismayed and you end up leaving the church and things, because he'll, he'll watch for you, he'll guard, he'll guard you. He'll protect you with the ministry that God's given him and he'll seek to deliver you out of situations that you've got yourself into. Maybe things that you've done, maybe you've taken a wrong job, maybe in the wrong relationship, different things like that. A true man of God will bring a ministry that will seek to deliver you and to restore you and to bring you back to where you should be. And that's what God ultimately challenged his own people over in Jeremiah chapter 2. It says here... Um, Jeremiah chapter 2, very quickly. I won't be finishing in a couple of, couple of minutes. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. And sometimes that's where we find ourselves in. We even Christians, and sometimes the things of this world come in, and we need a pastor, we need a man of God with a ministry that's prepared and ready to, to, to deliver you from situations that the devil will try to ensnare you with. That's what a man of God does. He's able to bring a word of God. He's able to encourage you. He's a man of faith. He's able to bring the word of God. And the word of God is not a dead letter. It becomes alive as he's preaching it and you can feel it in your heart and in your soul. That's what a man of God's all about. And that's why we pray, because I know I sat under a man of God. I sat under a man of God for 12 years. And what drew me to him was I just knew that he, when he was preaching, it was the truth because it witnessed in my heart. I know it was the truth and he believed it. It wasn't something he just did so he could earn a wage and pay his mortgage. He believed it. And that's what we are praying for a man who believes that he's, he's in the center of the will of God and God's got a purpose for his life. And, you know, just as, uh, as I said, when Joseph, this, on this passage in Second Kings, you know, it's amazing at the end here, after the Syrians come to take Elisha, but Elisha ends, ends, up, ends up taking them captive. You remember in the passage, he actually takes them captive. And what does the, the king of Israel say to him after he takes them captive? I'll just read this for you. This is the last point. I've lost my marker. Remember it, over in verse... Over in verse 20, and it came to pass that when they were come to Samaria, after obviously Elisha prayed that, they, that the Lord would blind them. They didn't know where they were going. And ultimately they ended up in Samaria. And Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes and they saw and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. This was their enemy, their enemies in Samaria. And the king of Israel said, Elisha, when he saw them, my father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? And he answered, thou shalt not smite them. Wouldst thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive? You see, why did he call him my father? Because a man of God will know the father's heart. 
you will have the father's heart and you'll know the father's will for the situation. Jack mentioned that Phineas knew the will of God in that situation that brother Jack brought out. And you know something? A man of God will know the father's will. He will know. And ultimately, you know what he's saying to him? You know what he's saying to the king of Israel? No, no, don't kill them. Show them grace. Feed them. Make sure they've got everything they need to eat. Show them grace. And that's the whole purpose for a true man of God, to bring the grace of God through Jesus Christ, through the gospel. It's all a beautiful type of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what a true man of God does. And that's why we're going to pray tonight. You know, we're praying that God will bring people to more people's design. And God will extend grace to them through the Lord, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that man will, will know the Father's will. Not only, I remember over in, uh, remember uh, another passage when uh, I can't remember who it was, also said to Elisha, my father, my father, what will we do? This was just before he was dying. Because they knew, in fact, he even says, the chariot of Israel, calls him the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. Because you know, so, you know, assuming you've got a true man of God, he knows where he's taking the chucks. He knows the direction and where he's taking the, the chucks of Jesus Christ. He knows he's got a remit from God. God's already told him what his ministry is all about. And he'll be able to take the church where God wants to take them. So I just pray, I just pray that these things would encourage you tonight. You know, we're, we're asking God for a gift from God tonight. We're asking God for something special. Because see if you don't see if you don't think it's special, then you know what? When we get a pastor, we'll never really, we'll never really appreciate it. We need to appreciate what a man of God is. So I just pray that. These thoughts would have blessed you tonight. I just let's come to prayer.